with what it was like when the dinosaurs went extinct. I mean, what happened immediately after the giant meteor hit Earth and wiped them all out? And what would happen if such an event were to happen in our current world? Well today, we're going to be looking at just that. But before the video gets started, make sure to drop a like and a comment letting me know your thoughts. Something that lots of people often fail to realize is that the Earth is hit with meteors every single day. They're just small enough to where they don't do much damage or they burn up in our atmosphere before even making it to the ground. But occasionally, one is big enough and traveling fast enough to make it all the way through our atmosphere and hit Earth. The frightening fact is that a meteor doesn't even need to be that big to do significant damage. For example, a meteor the size of a small garage could annihilate an entire large city, like New York City for example. Because they're traveling at tens of thousands of miles per hour, they hit with the force of a nuclear bomb. In comparison, the meteor that took out the dinosaurs was several kilometers long, which is very big. So you can imagine the kind of force that came along with it. So, the question is, what would happen if a meteor this size were to strike Earth today? A meteor of similar size would almost definitely kill 99% of the life on Earth. Immediately after the impact, a huge earthquakes would span around the Earth thousands of miles per hour. It would also trigger volcanic eruptions all over the world. The power of the meteor hitting Earth has 10 million times the power of the nuclear bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and would flatten everything in a 1 to 200 mile radius. For example, if it were to hit New York, virtually every building from Washington DC to Boston would be flattened. Within hours to days after the initial strike, millions are obviously dead and the real threat would start to kick in. A huge dust and ash cloud would fill the atmosphere and block out sunlight, lowering temperatures and killing plants and other things needed to live, likely starting a new ice age. The toxic gases released would also cause intense acid rain and destroy the ozone layer. Let's say, however, the meteor landed in the ocean, instead of land. Well, the outcome really isn't much better. The earthquakes and volcanic eruptions would still be there, but tidal waves hundreds of feet high would rip across the ocean at frightening speeds, destroying coastal cities and beyond. But, like with most disaster scenarios, there's no need to be too scared just yet. While smaller meteors happen often, the huge planet-destroying sized meteors happen approximately once every million years or so. So it's really nothing to stay up late worrying about. However, if one were to hit, there's absolutely nothing you could do to stop it. Now let's look at Ison's exit from its perihelion and its current trajectory. This is the Sun. This is Ison. Here is the orbital plane of the planets orbiting the Sun. It went in this direction as we see here. Now there is no such thing as north, south, east, or west in space. But in this image, if up is north, down is south, left is west, right is east, Ison is taking a northward trajectory far above the Earth. As you see, the Earth would be on the same orbital plane with all these other planets. However, on its port side and its starboard side, Ison is streaming debris trails. And as you can see, those debris trails, which are now estimated to be about 50 million miles wide, and expanding. Ison, as it continues to go on its current trajectory, if it does, will continue to stream out debris all along the way between the Sun and us until it passes our orbit and then we are no longer affected by it until we converge with Ison's initial debris trail and are hit on both sides by two streams coming, one coming from the sunward, one coming toward the sunward. As NASA predicts. In the meantime, this trail is going to be streaming down from Ison for as long as Ison exists 
all the way past the earth. What that tells us is the earth is going to be passing through Ison's debris for a good while. No one knows how long and scientists cannot predict how large any of this debris is going to be. But it will range from dust particles and gases, some of which are very poisonous, some of which are innocuous, to meteorites and meteors. We know that. How large? We cannot at this time know. As we were shown by NASA, when Ison passed Mars, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter observed Ison on October 1st. And Mars Reconnaissance has been watching Ison on and off ever since. But something very interesting is happening with Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter now. This is the Sun. This is Ison. Now there is no such thing as north, south, east, or west in space. But in this image, if up is north, down is south, left is west, right is east, Ison is taking a northward trajectory far above the Earth. As you see, the Earth would be on the same orbital plane with all these other planets. And here is Earth and some of the many, many satellites that are around it. These are just a few. Lo and behold, here is Mars Orbiter Mission on a direct trajectory toward Earth's orbit. Mars is way off in the distance, way over here. Mars Orbiter Mission is on its way to Earth. We already know Mars Orbiter Mission is all about ISON right now. So you have to ask yourself, why is Mars Orbiter Mission on its way to Earth? In my humble opinion, it has everything to do with these many asteroids, meteors, meteorites, and so forth that are going to be pelting the Earth over the next couple of months. This is going to be a very interesting ride, my friends. And I have said from the very beginning, this could be the golden censer being thrown upon the Earth. It could also include trumpets one, two, and three. This was no small comet, as we were told. Just before the first trumpet takes place, Revelation 8.5, it says, Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, and flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Is it possible that Ison is not only the first trumpet 
fulfillment, but perhaps even the second and the third trumpet fulfillment. Let's look at that for a moment. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all of the green grass was burned up. The second trumpet, the angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounds his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers, on a third of the springs of water, and the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that turned bitter. Ice, and as it continues to go on its current trajectory, if it does, will continue to stream out debris all along the way between the sun and us until it passes our orbit and then we are no longer affected by it until we converge with Ison's initial debris trail and are hit on both sides by two streams coming, one coming from the sunward, one coming toward the sunward. As NASA predicts. In the meantime, this trail is going to be streaming down from Ison for as long as Ison exists all the way past the Earth. What that tells us is the Earth is going to be passing through Ison's debris for a good while. No one knows how long and scientists cannot predict how large any of this debris is going to be. But it will range from dust particles and gases, some of which are very poisonous, some of which are innocuous, to meteorites and meteors. We know that. Does that sound like a lot of fireballs coming toward the Earth? It sounds like it to me. Joel chapter 2, pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and uh, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handsmaids. In those days I, uh, will I pour out my spirit, and I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Your thoughts? on that scripture, Rev. Michelle Hopkins. I believe that is playing out today, that the Lord's Spirit is being poured out on people all over the world. Sons and daughters are prophesying, old men and young, dreaming dreams, seeing visions. Men and women are seeing these things, visions and dreams. In fact, um, when I was 12 years old, I had a dream, and it was a prophetic dream, and it was about the first trumpet. Now, at 12 years old, I had never heard of the first trumpet. I didn't know the first thing about it, but I had this dream, and in this dream, I was in the city, and I could see all these fireballs coming down out of the sky. They were coming down on people, and people were being killed. And, there, and the buildings were being just absolutely destroyed by these things, and they were just, the number of them was incalculable. And I kept crying out, this is the first trumpet. The first trumpet has sound. And now, when I have been making these uh, videos about Aishin, and about why I believe we are now in the golden censer, the time of the golden censer, with these uh, things being thrown down upon the earth, 
and why I believe the first, second, and third trumpet is about to sound. Um, while I was making this, it was as if the Lord said to me, this is the fulfillment of your dream. Hmm. This is you telling the world the first trumpet is about to sound. 